Hi everyone, my name is Oz Wilder. I'm leading the product management group in Defender for Cloud team uh, in Microsoft. Uh, we are building the cloud security solution across uh, different cloud, not just Microsoft, as was mentioned before. We are protecting uh, cloud in Azure, GCP and AWS and expanding. Uh, together with me, we have Tamer and we will share this presentation. Let me start with uh, some finding from the survey. Uh, when we looked at the survey, this one pops up and I captured the main message here that uh, many organizations actually ended up in multi-cloud environment, even though, by the way, it says that uh, they didn't plan for it and they found themselves in some cases uh, in a multi-cloud uh, uh, situation, which is pretty complex to manage. 86% uh, of, uh, of the attendee responded that way. And another interesting takeaway is that uh, many organizations also use hybrid. Uh, so we will address those challenges and what it means for the enterprise. When we talk about uh, cloud security at a scale, uh, the problem is, is pretty complex. And let me explain uh, how we see it uh, and why we think that the cloud is bringing a new level of complexity. Uh, there are two main aspects here. One is the dynamic aspect, the fact that the cloud is changing rapidly. And the other one is the scale. And now if, if you take those two aspects and you increase the number of environment of a cloud type. So this becomes uh, even more complex and add to this uh, your on-prem because we just mentioned uh, hybrid as well. Then you, your uh, attack surface become a, a huge problem to manage and to, to handle. So there is a need for a new approach. And as we move to the next slide, we, we will highlight the main uh, approach or the, the technique that enterprises and uh, solution providers such as us took in the last few years. When we started this journey, we pitched for a, a shift left and uh, we always talked about uh, uh, secure by design as, a, as the right approach for the cloud to make sure that you don't end up with this complex network of, uh, of uh, risks that you don't know and don't able to manage, unable to manage, sorry. And then uh, something came in and it, we realized that, uh, uh, you know, uh, secure by design is a nice idea, but it not really worked that way. And we introduced this concept of context by creating linkage between different resources and creating some uh, connection. And, and this context helped us to understand who is talking to who, what is the relationship, and then we can start to prioritize and create some risk-based approach to our uh, threat and, and what we need to handle. And if we take this uh, as an example, uh, this uh, connection between different nodes here that you see and you see all the flow represent a, a, a potential blueprint of a cloud environment. When you try to address this challenge and you see that you have vulnerability in one place, you don't necessarily understand and see the linkage to another place in your environment. This concept of attack path create the linkage and see the flows, the common flows between those nodes and help you prioritize and understand the context and, and relationship between them so that you know that uh, one place can lead to a potential uh, data leakage and sensitive data uh, access. So this is cool and very interesting, but uh, if you have it only in one cloud, it doesn't solve the complexity of a multi-cloud. Having it in a multi-cloud environment is the interesting uh, uh, game change that we need to, to adopt here because uh, this environment is going to look even much more complex when we add to the mix multiple clouds environment and in addition the on-prem because we keep mentioning the hybrid concept. So let me hand it over now to, to Tamer and he's going to take you through the approach and how we solve this challenge. Thank you, Oz. So I'm gonna go through a few real life examples that uh, focus on a, a, the risk, a, especially a, when presented with multi-cloud environments. Uh, so let me take you through uh, Defender for Cloud. Basically, security admins come to Defender for Cloud 
uh, to understand and fix their cloud vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. Uh, and uh, as Oz already mentioned, uh, in multi-cloud and in hybrid environment as well. But for us, in order to do that efficiently, we need to not only surface the risks, but to understand a, a, what is the risk that is emanating from these vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. And therefore, it's our job to prioritize the security issues that we find based on these understandings of customers' environment, which is now today known as contextual awareness. So this originates from the fact that there is no uh, a fits all solution for security issues. Fixing vulnerabilities is not uh, of equal importance everywhere. However, uh, to be contextually aware uh, of customers' cloud environment, it's not enough to have optics uh, on the relationships uh, within the resources of each cloud environment. We must see deep in the cloud and as well as, you know, we, we must see across clouds. And as I was mentioned as well, beyond the cloud, because the cloud does not exist in a vacuum in the enterprise, it connects to everything else. So in fact, the wider context is the more correct context. And let me demonstrate this in multi-cloud uh, risks. So uh, these are a list uh, of uh, attack paths. An attack path is basically the story behind uh, what a potential attacker can do uh, to your environment. Uh, it, it tells the story from an attacker's perspective, uh, and these attack paths actually play a major role in quantifying uh, the risk that is associated to a vulnerability. I'll give a very simple example. If a vulnerability exists on a server that is a, a not exposed to the internet, it's not as important as a vulnerability that uh, exists on a server that is exposed to the internet. On the other hand, if the server has access to sensitive data, it is even more and more important. Uh, so these attack paths are the stories that stand behind the risk reasoning that we need to uh, uh, employ. However, if I dig deeper into a certain uh, attack path, you can see here that this is an example of a real world case it's not the same one, it's just a similar one uh, of an attack path that uh, was behind a critical contextual vulnerability. So in this example, as you can see, let me pull my pointer here. Uh, so you can see here that we have an internet facing uh, GCP VM with a critical remote code execution vulnerability um, that for some reason had an AWS access key that can authenticate to an AWS user uh, that has uh, read permission to a sensitive S3 bucket. Now, from there, users can um, a user can uh, you know click through uh, in the screens of the product to follow and discover the recommendations that we provide and the remediation steps and even activate the proper playbooks. But I want to pause here because. One thing that is noteworthy here is that this is a true what's going on here moment. Uh, so, so why and how were, are we able to discover these unexpected and quite frankly weird attack paths? And how can cross, cross cloud environments a, a surface like this in our findings? Uh, more harshly put, imagine a SOC analyst carrying out an investigation and need to deal with such complexity uh, of an enterprise that has multiple cloud environments, and they need to find the attack that actually crosses the chasm between clouds. Uh, how much time would they need to spend on this? This simple, the simple approach of you know research-led attack paths would probably surface the expected attack paths, but it's not enough. It's not going to surface these weird stuff. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna show you another example here. So this is a very similar example that as well shows you an, an exposed vulnerable machine in a, in a one cloud environment that leads to an exposure of sensitive database in another cloud environment. Uh, so, so how do we uh, uh, connect the dots here and make sense of this type of risk that emanates inherently and most uh, importantly in multi-cloud environments? Uh, 
So our approach is different. Our approach is what we call the automatic attack path discovery, uh, which is what allows us to do this. It basically, instead of looking at attack paths in customer environments, we just model the environment in the security graph. This, of course, is not unique. The security graph is something that uh, it models all the relationships that customers uh, have in their estate. Uh, but we also model all possible attacker steps. So we model each possible step from each type of resource in the graph. Now, using these inputs, we then run an agnostic and highly distributed algorithm that crawls the graph exhaustively, and it provides us with full coverage of all the possibilities while ranking their exploitability likelihood and their potential impact. Now, this is a quantum leap that requires, on one hand, a solution having world-class visibility and validated of, over many, many thousands of a, a large environments, and on the other hand, a uh, world-class TI that tracks thousands of threat actor activity and fully understands how threat actors move. This is not a simple requirement, and it's where AI actually meets TI. As a result, instead of just you know discovering the expected uh, cloud attack paths based on patterns that researchers provided, we provide the rules of the game and we anticipate the unknown because we make the algorithm work for us and anticipate the unexpected. Now, the key part of these unexpected risks, uh, according to our findings, are ones that cross between different cloud providers because mostly these are the ones that are unexpected and surprising. Uh, so that's it uh, uh, for me. Uh, I guess... Uh, thank you.